Yay. Hey friends, this is episode 69. This week we're talking about magnesium. All right. So we hear a lot about magnesium these days. Um, there have been statistics that have put, been put out that 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, right? You're seeing more, maybe it's just me, but I'm seeing more and more magnesium ads, right? That keeps coming up. Of course, they always target me for all kinds of, um, yeah, natural therapies, I think. But uh, <laughs> Uh, what we do know is that magnesium is essential for over 300 biochemical pathways, okay? So what does that mean? That means that um, it's one of the, the ingredients uh, that's really has to be present in order for our biochemistry of our body to be functioning efficiently, okay? Mm -hmm. So that includes things like um, how well we sleep, right? Um, that is also a biochemical reaction. We've talked about neurotransmitters in the past episodes, um, how our neurotransmitters are um, produced, how they're metabolized, and how they're excreted all requires magnesium. Um, there are a lot of magnesium um, gates uh, gated channels on our cells and they require the presence of magnesium in order to open to allow um, other nutrients to come into the cell right um, so uh, for our cell to get those nutrients for our cells to regenerate um, so magnesium is one of those things that yeah we, we all need and usually a lot of people aren't getting magnesium because they're not eating whole food diets. Um, and so I think that's why they get that estimation of 80% um, of Americans being deficient in magnesium, because we're not eating as many um, leafy vegetables like spinach, right? Nuts and seeds uh, are very high in magnesium, legumes, beans, and whole grains. And so if we think of the standard American diet doesn't have a lot of those things. They're usually pretty deficient in magnesium. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I wanted to talk about it because um, there's so many different benefits to magnesium. So I'm going to talk about it from the benefit side and then how we can get magnesium in our diet. Um, and then if you wanted to do a supplementation, there are a lot of different forms of supplements of magnesium. Okay, so I'm gonna hit a couple of things. So um, a lot of people are getting, are, are hearing about magnesium for sleep as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So magnesium um, is essential in order for our body to produce melatonin. It's mm -hmm. one of those uh, cofactors that's needed in that pathway of the neurotransmitters for us to go from serotonin to melatonin. And so it can be very calming and relaxing as well. So it's great um, to support our stress response and to help to be in that parasympathetic state um, so that we can relax and get more restful sleep. Okay. So sometimes if people have trouble falling asleep, magnesium can be a helpful um, uh, thing to add to make sure that they're getting plenty in their diet. Um, magnesium is also great for what we're talking about um, neurotransmitters. It's also great for um, not just the cortisol, that adrenal response, but also for anxiety because it has that relaxing um, component. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you go through some of the checklists, um, they'll say, oh, you know, are you magnesium deficient? Um, one of the uh, topics on the checklist is, do you have um, trouble in crowds? Like, do you have trouble with a lot of stimuli and crowds or get a little bit anxious? That could be a sign of a magnesium deficiency. Mm -hmm. um, so that um, is something to, to kind of keep in mind. Um, so not just on the mood side, but also things with digestion. Uh, magnesium can be very helpful. Uh, because it's it has that kind of relaxing um, mechanism, it can be relaxing to our blood vessels, it can be relaxing to our muscles, it can be relaxing to our digestive tract. Mm -hmm. So if it's relaxing to the digestive tract, it can be helpful in promoting regular bowel movements. Um, I have some folks who uh, suffer from constipation and they may have suffered from constipation for years. Um, and um, this came up just a minute ago today as well, is that constipation is also a spectrum, 
right? So sometimes constipation can be people who aren't having a bowel movement every day. They may be having every other day, every three days, every week. That's one end of the spectrum of constipation. Um, the other end of the spectrum is that they could still be having regular bowel movements and one, two, three bowel movements a day. Um, but sometimes those bowel movements may be um, a little bit strained, right? They might be a little on the drier side. They may look a little bit more like pellets than they do um, full well-formed stool. That would still be considered constipation. And so magnesium can help with that as well in promoting those regular bowel movements. Um, can also help with digestion. Um, if you're increasing magnesium ferment or magnesium high foods. Those are, like I said, things that are nuts and seeds, beans. They're also high in fiber. So it works well together if you're increasing those magnesium foods uh -huh. um, to get that uh, fiber in as well as that mineral. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So um, the digestion component also, so because like I said, it has that relaxing property, not just for our mind, but also for our body. Um, if people experience leg cramps or muscle cramps um, of any sort, whether, that, well, muscle cramps that are associated without activity, right? So if you're getting muscle cramps after working out, that's usually not a magnesium problem. That's usually a potassium problem. But if you're getting muscle cramps, um, whether they're in your legs, people get cramps in their um, fingers and their toes, they'll get the Charlie horses in the middle of the night, they'll get cramps, you know, on their sides. Um, that's usually a magnesium deficiency. Okay. And so um, by adding a magnesium in your food, you can do magnesium topically like as a magnesium lotion or oils right. um or even epsom salt baths i'm going to talk about at the end we're talking about different delivery forms um but so we can kind of relax our muscles so that's great for like yeah um post workouts um it's great for and you've got to be a little bit consistent about it if you do experience muscle cramps so if you're experiencing the, the, any of these symptoms, the trouble sleeping, the constipation, the muscle cramps, that could be um, a relate or a frank deficiency in magnesium. So sometimes we have to um, take more magnesium to get over that deficiency and kind of balance things out a little bit. Okay. Um, there's some really good research on how magnesium can lower our blood pressure. Right. So if people have high blood pressure um, and if they have a comorbidity or if they also have diabetes and high blood sugar, um, eating magnesium rich foods or supplementing on a regular basis can bring down that blood pressure by relaxing those blood vessels kind of helps to dilate them a little bit. So that'll bring down our blood pressure um, because it works well with muscles, helps with our heart. Right. It's a muscle, um, but it can also balance out our blood sugars because the magnesium um, uh, gates that I was talking about. Right. When magnesium is present, it opens the gate and then minerals can come in or nutrients can come into the cell. Um, it also helps bring glucose into the cell okay. so that we balance out and kind of lower our blood sugar that's circulating in the blood and it puts it into the cell where it needs to be. Okay. And let's see. Um, yeah, some of the uh, research around diabetes and magnesium has just been out in the last two or three years, um, but it's very, it's significant. We've known that magnesium helps with low blood, with, with hypertension and lowering and stabilizing blood pressure um, due to the mechanism. Uh, we've seen that quite a bit. So um, when people have multiple, you know, like when they have a lot of these symptoms, usually what I see is the stress, the sleep, the constipation um, and the muscle cramps. I'm like, all right, magnesium is something that can be helpful um, to address those, uh, those deficiencies. But, um, since they're estimating that 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, just adding a little bit, um, can be very helpful, I think. Yeah. yeah. When we're talking about how much magnesium to add to our diet, mm -hmm. okay. A lot of people, they want it, they want a number, right? Like how much should I be taking? So I usually tell folks, okay, um, maintenance dose is between 300 and 500 milligrams of magnesium a day. 
okay? So to kind of put that in perspective, um, for magnesium rich foods, uh, black eyed peas, right? Or black eyed peas, purple whole peas. My grandma used to call them purple whole peas. The so same thing as black eyed peas. Okay. Um, in about half a cup, you can get 200 milligrams of magnesium, okay? okay. Um, the beans are always gonna be higher, anywhere from 200 to 150 milligrams of magnesium. Um, things like, um, I used to, let's see, I can't find it on my list right now, um, but cashews are very high in magnesium. Usually about a tablespoon of cashews um, will give us about 200, yeah, 250 milligrams of magnesium. Mm -hmm. So if you are uh, enjoy cashews or cashew butter, it's a great way to get good proteins, plant-based fats and magnesium in as well. Um, and so green leafy vegetables also are very high in magnesium. You definitely have to aim for that six to seven servings to get in. Um, just one serving of spinach, like a cup of a spinach is not going to get you enough magnesium. You know what um, a serving is, is a cup? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're going to have to, yeah, do. So one cup of, well, yeah, uh, half a cup of spinach is 80 milligrams of magnesium. So one cup would be 160. So you're going to be, yeah, going with four cups of spinach, <laughs> blend it up, put it in a yeah. smoothie <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, to get your magnesium for the day. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, sometimes when they process foods, right? So like oatmeal does have a decent amount of magnesium in it, but the closer you get away from steel cut oats and the closer you get to um, in instant oats, yeah, um, or the oats in the packets, uh, you're gonna have, you're not gonna have much magnesium because magnesium is in the uh, nutrient rich in like the germ um, so the oat germ or the wheat germ um, or the bran, that's where you're going to get the magnesium um, from those grains. And so the more processed the grains, the less magnesium you're getting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you can do, okay, so magnesium is a mineral, okay? All minerals are better absorbed in our body if we get them in a plant form right? If we get them from plants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the reason why I emphasize magnesium rich foods is because all the foods are plant based. Mm -hmm. And so the plants have done all the work for us. They've taken the nutrients, they've taken the magnesium from the soil. Um, they've brought it up through um, the plants and integrated into the chlorophyll. So then it's bioavailable, it's readily available, right? So then it's a lot easier for our body to recognize it, digest it, and use that magnesium. Okay. Okay. When we look at supplementing with magnesium, because yeah, um, sometimes we need that as an option. Uh, the magnesium that's often produced in nutraceuticals is often a, chem uh, a chemical magnesium. It's usually not plant-based. If you can find a plant-based magnesium, you're always going to be better off. Okay. Um, and in the world of chemistry and even nutraceuticals and in biochemistry, um, they've uh, have taken magnesium molecules, right. Um, and attach them to different molecules um, that our body can use. Okay. okay. The most common form of magnesium that we see that's usually prescribed on the conventional side is magnesium citrate for constipation. Okay. Usually um, you'll see magnesium citrate enemas, you'll see magnesium citrate, they sell it at Walgreens or Walmart. Um, and so if people are having trouble going to the bathroom or they haven't been to the bathroom, you know, and had a bowel movement in like a week and they're, you know, talking to their doctor about it, they'll tell them, go get a bottle of magnesium citrate. It's the most popular magnesium supplement. Okay. okay. Um, it's probably the most popular because it's super inexpensive. <laughs> Um, it is absorbed to a certain extent. So magnesium citrate is attached to a citric acid molecule. 
Okay, so that helps it to be absorbed. Um, but that citric acid is also a laxative. So that's why it helps to move things out. Um, it helps um, with mostly with constipation. Um, if people have, you know, um, chronic constipation, if they have colon issues or, you know, inflammation or colon cancer, um, this is usually not the best form of magnesium because their digestive tract is already irritated. Mm -hmm. um, to give a citric acid laxative on top of that can be even more uncomfortable and cause symptoms to flare. Okay. Um, now, when people go to Walmart and buy magnesium in a bottle um, that's a pill, it's mm -hmm. usually magnesium citrate. You've got to read the bottle. Um, and if it's not magnesium citrate, if you're buying a bottle of magnesium, like from the dollar store, right? Um, it's either magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide. Okay. Oxide is bound to an oxygen molecule, right? Which our body can use. Our body can use that oxygen molecule. Um, but it can also, um, our body will want to use that oxygen molecule and it may not use that magnesium molecule as efficiently. Um, it, this is usually the least absorbed form of magnesium, um, but it, and it has the highest elemental magnesium. So oxide. Uh, magnesium oxide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm um, like I said, magnesium is a mineral. It's an elemental. Um, but when you're doing the magnesium oxide, our body doesn't um, absorb it very well. And it's a little bit harder to digest. Okay. okay. Um, now, if you need something just as like a muscle relaxer, right? Um, or um, for nerve pain, magnesium oxide could be a better form of magnesium to take if that's what you're primary um, concern is. Mm -hmm. But if you take magnesium oxide in higher doses, so you want to do it in lower doses, you want to do, you know, like 200, 300, if you're doing the 500 or the 1000 in magnesium oxide, you will get diarrhea. Okay, so put that out there. Um, so those are the, the, the main two that you'll see out on the market in generic supplements, or most over the counter supplements. Yeah. Okay. Um, what you prefer this one has this one is nature's life yes i got it from sprouts but the uh it's magnesium what focus come on camera focus for us it's magnesium oxide citrate and then malate yes okay so citrate and oxide the most two common ones yep. right um malate is probably the third most common. The malate is better. Okay. I tell folks, if you're looking for um, a magnesium over the counter, a magnesium malate is a little bit better. Um, it's great for fatigue because it's a, that malate is a malic acid that's attached to the magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, malic acid is a natural, it's a fruit um, acid. So it's usually found in most of our cells. Um, it's a, one of the ingredients to make ATP for energy. Um, and that the bond between malic acid, the magnesium is, it, it breaks apart really easily. So it makes it more bioavailable for our body. Yeah. Okay. So um, that magnesium malate would be the saving grace of that supplement. <laughs> that would be the one. Yeah. Um, that you, your body will be able to absorb the most of. Okay. Okay. Um, so that would be my, my, my first recommendation is make sure it says magnesium malate on it. Um, if you're looking for one over the counter. Okay. Um, the other ones, um, amino, so, uh, magnesium chelates, right? Chelated magnesium is another one that we often, um, kind of hear about this magnesium. Um, so if it's chelated, that means that, um, it is bound, it's usually bound to larger amino acids, right? Well, okay. we know amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Mm -hmm. Our body uses amino acids to build any protein, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so amino acid chelated magnesium is, all, is very easy for our body to use um, and to absorb. Yeah, okay. um, the amino acid chelate is usually 
um, beneficial for multiple things, right? Not just uh, the uh, muscle relaxation, the spasms, right? The cramping, things like that. Um, but, or like with blood pressure, right? All our blood, not well, our arteries have muscles in them. So you're relaxing that. Um, but the, um, how oh, I lost my train of thought. Let's see. Um, I'm talking about chelate. Anyway, so the chelated magnesium is often um, easier for us to, to use. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually have people look for a chelated magnesium. Um, it's not as easy to find in over-the-counter brands, but sometimes some of them do carry them. I was like, that'd kind of be like a middle um, shelf type magnesium would be one that's chelated. How now, do you spell chelate, by the way? C-H-E-L-A-T-E. -E. Okay. And then D is in dog chelated or chelate. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are different other forms of magnesium where they um, attach to specific amino acids, right? Mm -hmm. So usually chelated can be um, uh, like three or four different amino acids, but they don't usually specify. Um, so if you're looking for a, mag a magnesium to target a specific issue, okay? So let me give you an example. Um, glycine, right? Glycine is the smallest amino acid that, um, uh, that we have. And magnesium glycinate is magnesium attached to a glycine molecule. Okay. okay? And so that glycine amino acid um, is relaxing. It's a relaxing, um, uh, it's necessary to produce GABA, which is a relaxing neurotransmitter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me finish my thought there. <laughs> Um, so if people have a tendency to be more stressed, right, they're having trouble sleeping um, because they're wired, but they're tired, um, magnesium glycinate can be a better form of magnesium because it's attached to that amino acid that's specific to um, our mental calmness and relaxation. Okay. It's, it's also um, one of the more bioavailable um, because glycine is the smallest amino acid and is really essentially in almost all our cells. Um, magnesium glycinate is usually one of the best magnesium supplements um, available. So sometimes uh, it can be a little bit more expensive and sometimes you can also get away with a smaller dosage, right? You may only need to aim for a hundred to 200 milligrams of magnesium glycinate versus 500 milligrams of the magnesium citrate. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Cause your body just, you'll need to take more of the citrate to get the same um, right. effect with the uh, higher quality magnesium glycinate. Okay. Um, one other one, let's see, that I want to tell you about is um, magnesium three and eight. Okay. So this one is um, becoming a little bit more popular, I think, because three and eight is a um, three and eight is an amino acid ester that can cross the blood brain barrier. So you're seeing more, I'm seeing more and more magnesium three and eight supplements um, for that are kind of marketing or targeting towards um, our brain health. So like dementia, Alzheimer's fo for focus, we're seeing, I'm seeing more magnesium three and eight um, targeted towards like for focus, for memory, for like, um, people who have concerns of ADD and ADHD um, because it crosses that blood brain barrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, just because you choose a magnesium that's sort of like specific, like the glycinate for the um, uh, relaxation component, the malate for the energy, right? The three and eight for the brain um, health. It's not to say that that magnesium doesn't help in other areas. Right. So it's not like it's individualized. Oh, this is only going to affect my brain. It'll still affect um, your digestion, right? Your regular bowel movements. It'll still affect sleep. It'll still affect blood pressure. Um, it's just sort of what it, what they're targeting sort of the primary action is with that particular supplementation. Okay. All right. So um, I wanted to throw those out there because often, because I get this question a lot. People hear, you know, like, oh, I know I need magnesium. Well, what kind of, you know, like um, some people 
don't know there are different kinds of magnesium. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I wanted to be able to share this so that people kind of have an idea of what to look for, what's different. Um, like I said, if you're aiming for the magnesium, uh, the, the citrate and oxide are the most common. Mm -hmm. The malate is sort of that middle of the road. That's the better um, of the three. Yeah. Uh, that the chelated is a little bit step up from that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the next step up from that um, would be the more specific ones like the magnesium glycinate or the magnesium three and eight. Okay. So, um, and usually the higher up the steps, like I said, um, you don't have to do as high doses. You don't always have to aim for that 300 to 500 milligrams. Now, if you're experiencing a significant, like there are some folks who experience muscle cramps on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't give the caveat, you still have to drink water, right? You have to drink water in order for those muscles um, to get the minerals and the electrolytes they need so you don't have muscle cramping. But um, if people have multiple, right? Like the constipation, the muscle cramps, the anxiety, the um, high blood pressure, um, the uh, anxiety uh, or the, you know, increased stress, then sometimes we'll have to start with higher doses to correct that deficiency and then go to a maintenance dose. But um, usually starting out with 300 milligrams of any of these forms of magnesium is pretty safe for folks. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you're taking higher doses of the lesser forms, the oxide and citrate, like I said, it can lead to loose stools and diarrhea. Um, we can also absorb, so magnesium, because it's one of those elements that is essential to our body, we can absorb magnesium through our skin, right? So especially if people have trouble taking um, capsules or they're trouble getting their magnesium in their food form, um, or they don't like the taste of the magnesium powders, magnesium, topically can be very beneficial. Um, we can absorb it very easily without the side effects of having the loose stools or the diarrhea. And we can do that in uh, like Epsom salt baths, right? I promote Epsom salt baths a lot <laughs> um, for that reason. So there's different, again, there's different types of um, magnesium and Epsom salt bath. So Epsom salt, I Oh, am I going to get this right? It's usually, yeah, magnesium chloride, I believe. Um, nope. Epsom salts, I think, is maybe it's magnesium sulfate. Yeah. Um, you can also find, I have some here, some magnesium bath flakes. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually magnesium chloride. Um, so this one is a little bit easier to digest. It's easier or not to digest, to absorb through our skin and it's easier to dissolve in water. Um, but you can also make like magnesium oils and lotions or find them. They sell magnesium lotions at Walmart now in the muscle rub section, you know, next to the um, Icy Hot and stuff like that. Um, and they're targeting it for people with muscle cramps so that you'll, you know, apply it top of week to that area and you're just locally addressing that um, muscle cramp and giving the, it the ingredients it needs at that time. But I tell you what, if you're experiencing muscle cramps, you're already deficient and that magnesium lotion is going to help address the symptoms, but it's not going to get to the root cause. Yeah. So yeah, um, doing Epsom salt baths or doing, um, uh, magnesium flake baths or using magnesium lotion um, to help you get rest at night, right? Sometimes I tell folks, uh, start a routine where you're applying magnesium lotion or magnesium oil on your body at night. You're, you, you know, absorbing that magnesium to help promote more restful sleep. So. so magnesium oil, is it really like oily, like coconut oil? No. So they call it oil, but it's actually just water and magnesium. Yeah, oh, okay. they call it oil because of the consistency isn't quite like water. Mm -hmm. um, but if you take two parts of magnesium flakes to one part water, hot water, and it'll dissolve it, it'll kind of get this like oily consistency. That's magnesium oil. It's essentially just dissolved magnesium flakes. Because I'm trying to think, like I was like to think about how I can multitask, and like I have a guasha, and oh, you yeah. have to use oil 
to do yes. that. And I was like, oh, I wonder if you could use magnesium oil and then use that gua sha. Yes. Yeah. You can use them together. Yeah. You can use them together because it will, the magnesium oil will be a little bit oily. Yeah. On the skin until you absorb it. Um, and so, yeah, you can use that for gua sha as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to get your two things in at once. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that's most of the things that I wanted to cover today about magnesium. Do you have um, any, like, because I know, like, we did a talk a while back ago and we mentioned, like, PABA for, like, yes, hair color, right? Like, yes. graying. And I think most people who have, like, either Walmart or Sprouts or natural grocers is, like, our, like, where we go to find these things. But it, I, it's hard to find PABA or like some of these magnesiums. Do you have like places that you recommend that people can go to and find these things? Um, so I have a couple of things. Yes. So when we're talking about um, general access. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so first off, I'm going to share with you some um, over the counter brands that most people have access to. Okay. And these are also the brands that you want to look for at Sprouts or natural grocers or your local health food store. Okay. Um, they also have, you can order them directly from the company online. Um, the four reputable over the counter brands are things like um, Nature's Way. Okay. okay? Um, Jaro. That's spelled J A R R O W. Uh -huh. Life Extension. And the Now brand, N O W. Mm -hmm. um, those four companies are sister companies to uh, physician grade supplements. So they do the third party testing. They do the, um, where they can prove what's on the labels actually in the product. Um, they do the, for the most part, most of them do the heavy metal testing and uh, the mold toxicity testing. So um, those are the brands that you want to look for when you're looking for these supplements. Um, now, and then because a lot of the health food stores, they will carry what's available, right? Mm -hmm. um, or the natural grocery stores, they'll um, carry what's available. And so you still have to read the labels, right? Based on what you're looking for. Um, if you are looking for physician grade supplements, um, you can always reach out to me. I do have an online dispensary called Full Script dot com um anybody can make a anybody can make a profile yeah i think it's called um on fullscript.com um if you go to fullscript.com um gosh i should know this off the top of my head you may have to reach out to us um but you can use my code anybody can create that um you don't have to have a consultation uh through me through me you can also i have it listed on my website drcarmenjones.com i think it's under resources there's a little thing about supplements and it'll tell you how to set up your own account um so then you can search on there if you want access um i do carry some of those over-the-counter brands as well um to yeah help people with different price points within their budget to make sure they're getting good quality supplements um but i also offer those physician grade supplements as well as well and they mail them to you they come in the mail or ups you get to decide mm -hmm. um they mail all over us and canada so um people have access to it that way as well so okay. Anything else? Um, I think that wraps up for me. I hope you guys have a better appreciation for magnesium. <laughs> you um, spend your $20 on this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you have questions and you're trying to, yeah, um, you guys are uh, listening and want to reach out, want to have I ideas of maybe what the best magnesium would be for you. Yeah. Don't hesitate to um, send us a message in the comments or um, reach out to us. Cool. All right, friends. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.